Alright, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, and this time, we're welcomed by a happy little Kerman on the moon. Soon, soon we will do that for ourselves, but not this episode. Today, I want to continue basically what we were doing last episode. You know, I brought back that crew safely from the... where is it now? The Space Station Core. And then we deorbited this thing. Now, I had a fair few people uh, basically ask me, well, why not just build off of the Space Station test that was already there? Why deorbit it? Well, basically, uh, you know, this is a lovely design, and I thank the folks over at Squad for building it. It is great and a wonderful starting point. But for my, my own station, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and basically something that was of my own design. And so, I have been working on this Kotobos orbital platform, which we will load that up here. Oop, yeah, I built it way up here. Ooh, and hey, I forgot to actually put on the docking ports there. Let's see. Those are the ones I need, I believe. Come on. Take. Why won't you take? Let's try that again. Okay, let's rotate. Excellent. So now do the four symmetry. Maybe. Oh, other way around. Well, there's one. I guess I'm going to have to do this manually. Oh. Give me a moment. There we go. <laughs> And there, and one more, and we are good. There we are. Now, as you can see, it is pretty closely related to the stock space station core, and its design of having a lander capsule up top and then a habitation module. Though I decided to add four solar panels around the side to make sure I had plenty of power, some lights here on either end, so that once we have things connected here we can light them up nicely to see, a second habitation module, and RCS, which we have the thrusters up here and down here. And at the bottom of the station core we have a battery and an additional docking port, as well as at the top. Again, a docking port and battery. And my thinking for this station is to send up this new sort of platform base and attach additional satellite, or not satellite, space station modules off of each of these four center sections, which of course will be lit up by these. And the top and, there we go, bottom docking ports were actually going to use those to be where we send up crew and supplies. Now, of course, supplies doesn't really matter all too much in the game at this point, with the exception of RCS fuel, and potentially one of these may be a, lar a large fuel tank of some form, so that we can use this as a refueling station, perhaps, up in orbit. I, I haven't decided completely on that yet. I may build a second station that is specifically for refueling purposes, mm, but maybe not. I don't, I don't know. We, we will come to that bridge later. And I've also been playing with the action groups here, trying to basically figure out what all they do, and they are pretty cool. Now, you have these basic ones that are built in, and the abort one, you can set stuff up, but I'm going to avoid that for now. But I have played around with this one, and I did test it just by going to launch this real quick and have it sit on the launch pad. And when I hit one, all f of, not four, all eight of these solar panels will extend. It's actually pretty cool. I, I like that. It saves me time from having to go to each one individually. I'll have to play around with that a bit more when I send up something else with uh, all sorts of science modules so we can have a custom action that loads them all up. But, of course, we need to get this thing into space. And 
let's just save. And if you'll remember, I did show you the ship that we had launched the test station up with. Which is this beast. Now, I was very, very pleased with this. And I'm quite certain that this design right here could get our new space station up into orbit. But I don't think it will get the station into the orbit that I want it. I want this to be at a much higher orbiting altitude than this test station was at. So we are going to take this bottom bit as a basic design and we are going to modify it quite a bit. Basically make it bigger. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that, that always works out for people, right? <laughs> so first things first, let's add a decoupler here. Bam. And then we need this upper stage is what I'm hoping is what we will have to use to get this station where I need it. And then I can just drop away this section and let it float away, leaving this nicely up in orbit. That's, that's the hope, at least. So let's pop on a, another Rocco Max decoupler. And now I've had some comments on these orange tanks, and I've also done some reading myself, and apparently this orange tank somehow causes heating on the engine. So those overheating issues we were having, apparently this is the cause, though I'm, I'm not sure on that, but we're going to test that theory here today. So I'm going to use two of these rather than just one of these. Now, I'm, I believe that these carry roughly the same amount of fuel when doubled up. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much double. Actually, I think it's exactly double. Yes, yes, it is exactly double. <laughs> um, so, I'm hoping that those rumors are true and that this configuration, rather than this, will help out that overheating issue that we were having. And this time, though, we're going to be a bit more ambitious, and rather than just having two side-mounted tanks slash engine, we're going to go with four. <laughs> and let's pop on some more of these. That'll work. You're a little bit higher than I wanted, but oh well, we'll, we'll work with it. Pop that on, and then four of these big boy engines. And now, for fuel lines. Now, I did really like this, how it was draining from one to the other so we could dump fuel, or not dump fuel, but dump weight in the process of our launch. Now, ooh, what did that do? No, no, I don't want all four going into the main engine. Let's take that back off and just do two. That should work there. Oh, though that's not the tank that I wanted it on. And it went back to four. What the... You know what? We'll just do this one by one. Uh, that, that'll work. <laughs> there we go. So that tank will drain into the center. Then so will this tank. It will also go into the center. Whoop. That didn't work. There we go. And then I want these two tanks to drain into these two so that we can lose these stages first hopefully if this works how I'm hoping it will and so we'll just pop a fuel line to there excellent and we will do the same over here very good that should all be functional now and then let's add some lovely struts so that we don't get some sort of horrible, horrible failure. <laughs> so we, we don't need that. And we'll do one in there as well. That should be plenty. I shouldn't have to put one up here because uh, that the decoupler is right there. Hmm. 
Ooh, though I probably should put some struts here in between these two. Actually, I don't want to do it from there. I want to do it from this side. I honestly don't know if that makes much of a difference, but hey, I'm gonna go with it. Alright, that looks good. I'm liking this, and I think that this should get us all the way into space and into the orbit that I want correctly. Hopefully. So, basically, all five of these engines are going to just, you know, have at it. And then these two tanks here and here are going to drain into these two tanks, and then they will fall away. Then these will burn out, draining into the center tank, and then they will fall away, leaving us with the center engine to get us that last little bit into space. And then we have this tank and engine to get us into the orbit that we want. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, now I am going to mess around with the staging and, ooh, and of course add fairings. We, we definitely need those. I don't want to have my ship just fall over on the launch pad. So yeah, I will bring you back once we are on the launch pad and I have made sure that all these staging is correct. So I will see you guys in a second. Alright, and we are now on the platform, ready to launch, and wait, what the... That's not Bill and Bob. Jarek and Billy. Huh. That's... Strange, I brought back Bill and Bob so that I would have them for this mission, but... Oh well, I guess we're gonna have to... Well, he looks happy, so I guess he's cool, and... Well, he did just wave, so I, you know, I can't stay mad at him. But still, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for Bill and Bob. Well, I guess I have a Billy, so can't complain too much. But... <laughs> yes, we are here and ready... I uh, definitely took a little bit of reworking. Let's just do a quick spot check of things. Yeah, that all seems good. Let's hope so. Good job dancing there, Billy. Actually, these guys might be alright. They both seem quite happy and enjoying themselves. I think we might be good with them. Alright, let's bring up our custom window editor and bring up orbit info. Let's pop you right there there. Excellent, that looks good to me. Now, let's close that up. Resources are good. Let's do it to stage only. We are at max throttle and ready to send Jarek and Billy into space in three, two, one, lift off. Whoa! Oh, okay. Oh, this is a this is a wobbly rocket. Oh, oh God. <laughs> well, Jarek, Billy, maybe we won't get you into space. Ooh, we're getting some heat. We're getting some heat. All right, let's lower that a little. Oh, huh? Looks like we have to lower the throttle down less than what we had to with the other the orange fuel tank. So, huh. Right now, I am I am thinking that the orange fuel tank may be a bit of an issue, because I had to have it about 80% fuel capacity for it to... Or not fuel capacity, but 80% throttle for it not to overheat. I'm basically staying up there somewhere around 95 or so. And, ooh, I'm not paying attention. We need to start doing our gravity turn. Ooh, okay. Ooh, there we go. A little less wobbly. All right, SAS back on. Oh, correct yourself. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, maybe I should actually rotate the ship a little bit. Those tanks are about to go offline. There we go. I didn't want gravity pulling it down. And whoa, okay, we're in a bit of a spin. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alright, this is going well, though. Looks like we are going to get this in the space, and with that apoapsis, it looks like we shouldn't have a problem at all getting ourselves into a good high orbit. 
And this is a horribly inefficient flight. I was hoping to stay on that 90 degree mark, but... Uh, it definitely did not want to cooperate. Let's let's try to see if we can get this to up to 150 quite nicely. I don't think that should be an issue at all, actually. All right, we are almost there. Let's just throttle up. We shouldn't have too many problems with heat. Bam, there we go. Let's look at the map. Ooh, that's good and wide. I like that. We did a good gravity turn this time. Let's add a maneuver and bring this sucker out. Hmm, let's, let's just stick it to 150 for right now. Just get ourselves into a basic orbit, and then we can use the smaller engine to adjust our orbit to get it to something a bit more my liking. I haven't decided exactly where I want to put this thing yet, but... Hey, you know what? That's good. I can live with that. But I do want it to be in a much higher orbit. Somewhere between 200 to 500 is what I'm thinking at the moment. But uh, that may change. I haven't haven't completely decided on that. Let's start moving ourselves to where we need to be for that maneuver. Excellent. Very, very happy that I have RCS on this thing. A little bit more, and SAS on. Let's lock it in. Perfect. Alright, now this is saying a 30 second burn. Somehow I don't believe that, but <laughs> we're gonna go with it. Let's actually bring up that node, navigation node one. Let's see, where is that thing? And maneuver node info. There we are. Alright, well now that one's saying 29 seconds as well. Huh. So yeah, I was a little unsure last episode with how these two were displaying information, but they seem to be on par with one another this time around. Hmm. I'm pleased with that. And I have a lot more fuel than I thought I would launching this thing. I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. I was thinking that we would have to use this stage to even get into our initial orbit, but we've got quite a bit of fuel left in this system. Uh, I'm very happy with that whole launch process. It went quite well. Jarek and Billy seem quite excited. I'm... You know what? Even though I am a little sad I don't have Bill and Bob, I like these two. They must be related to Jebediah. <laughs> I mean, come on, look at them. They're just so happy. They're like, yay, space. I mean, hey, who wouldn't be? Well, m maybe you wouldn't be so happy in a rocket that I designed, but nonetheless. <laughs> okay, we are almost to our burn point. I'm going to start my burn at T minus 15 seconds. If it's going to take that 30, I think that that would be a good point to start. Let us see. Here we go. Alright. Going well. Going well. Jarek and Billy still looking happy in there. That's good. Periapsis is coming up, though. Oh, we might have to pull out the other engine for this. Whoop. There we go. Ooh, losing it a bit. Okay. Yeah, it's coming up quite nicely now. I'm liking that. We're doing good. Should be up to the point that I am hoping for soon. Though our apoapsis is going up, let's just stop it there. And we are in a wonky orbit, but an orbit nonetheless. Hmm. Alright, I am going to pause it again here for a second. As, whoa. Ooh, that's, that's a really wonky orbit. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I am going to bring you guys back again. After doing a little maneuvering, you don't need to see me tinkering around with the orbit here. So, I will bring you back in a moment.
All right, and so after a fair bit of maneuvering, I finally decided to have my apoapsis and periapsis around the 500 kilometer mark, which is interesting, as it puts me almost in line with uh, Jebediah's X1 capsule, <laughs> which to be honest, makes me kind of tempted to try some form of a rendezvous with his capsule and EVA to the space station. But no, no, I, I want to send Jebediah on a moon mission, so I need him back on the surface. <laughs> it's still tempting, though. It's very, very, very tempting. Come on, it's, it's Jebediah. Who else to send on an EVA to, a, to try and get inside a space station? But... No, we, we have gotten to this point. We have a good deal of fuel left. We could even maneuver more if we wanted to. So I, I am extraordinarily pleased with the design of this space station. So I actually think it's time to test out our action group that we custom made. So let's hit one. Oh, now that's awesome. That's that's great. I, I've never really played around with those action command groups yet. So that that is great. <laughs> Though this may not be the most efficient solar panel design ever, I probably should have staggered them so one was facing that way and another going across that way. But, eh, nonetheless, I still like it. <laughs> it looks good, and that... That is all that matters. <laughs> all right, let's turn on the lights. Oh, that illuminates the ship quite well. I use the Mark II lights rather than the Mark Ones, as the Mark Ones are bright spotlights. These are supposed to be more area coverage, so that's that's why I went with these. I thought that they would be a better option to go with for illuminating my space station. Which is great, it gives you a very nice view of those docking ports. So we should have a easier time trying to get to them. Let's turn them off for now though. I'm kind of debating leaving that engine there. I really should just get rid of that engine. But, oh... Because I do like this orbit. It is basically perfect. I'm actually surprised I got it this good. 489 by 497. That took me quite a while to get there. I was fiddling with this thing so much because we actually kind of launched a little bit wonky because of all the shaking. And so I had to align my orbit with the, you know, the right degree that I wanted it, the inclination of zero. Because uh, I don't know why, but for some reason I wanted it in line with the moon. So, <laughs> so yeah, it took a little bit of fiddling. I, I think I first, you know, we started at about 150, then I put it out to 200. Then I was like, ah, maybe 250. And then I just decided, ah, to heck with it. Let's go out to 500 where Jebediah is. So here we are. We have a lovely space station. Jarek and Billy are extraordinarily happy. Let's turn the lights back on and then go IVA. As he, I wanted him right here because a, another section of the space station will be going right along here and with the lights, it should illuminate that nicely. Though, ooh, I forgot we have those R RCS thrusters right above the window. Huh, kind of ruins the view a bit. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, to get the right coverage for the RCS, I had to put them right there, and that's his window. <laughs> He's got a great view, though. I like the angle it's at right now. You're looking right at the planet. It's perfect. I'm, I'm quite pleased. So, yeah, you know what? Let's ditch the engine. Hopefully this works. <laughs> And... decouple. I was hoping for a bit more forceful of a removal. <laughs> um, hmm. Huh. Yeah. Alright, well, let's turn on the RCS. And just move forward a bit, away from that. 
That's good. It'll slowly, in time, float away. Um, I may send up a mission to try and get rid of that thing, but I will probably do that on my own. I don't think you guys would like to sit here for a few hours while I try and rendezvous and then capture debris. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know what? I am extremely pleased. We are slowly moving away from the engine, and we have... The Kodobos Orbitable or Orbitable? No, no. Orbital. Kodobos Orbital Platform. Honestly, I'm probably going to change the name. That's just what I was thinking of when I was first building it. Let's rename the vessel. Set it as a space station. We'll leave it as that for now. Uh, I'll have to think of another name. If you have any fun suggestions, put it in the comments below. I will take them into account. And hey, if you come up with a good name, I'll definitely use it. And yeah, mainly I wanted to switch it to a station though now, so bam, we got the station. And yeah, we'll start sending up other missions to attach on to these four points. I haven't decided exactly when I, what I want to put up here quite yet. Probably some sort of uh, capsule or space station module designed for scientific stuff. Another one designed for communication. Another habitation module. And potentially still might do the refueling module idea. Since I do have four, yeah, I actually kind of like that plan. I'll have a science module, a habitation module, a communication module, and a refueling module. I think that will work out quite well. And with the refueling section, that means we can use this as a platform for future missions, such as out to the moon, which can we see our friend them? Oh yeah, he's over there. So yeah, I think that will work quite well. And I know I said I'll use these ports for docking of crew transport ships, but in the future, which, yes, that is for now, but in the future, I may add on in these directions, uh, additional space station modules. We will see, but I do plan on this thing growing quite a bit. Uh, the next episode, I will probably send up the first of my modules. Maybe one, maybe two, I haven't decided yet. We will see. Yes, I hope you all have enjoyed this episode and that you enjoy my lovely little space station here, which will be growing much larger. <laughs> and of course, I hope you do come back for the next episode and have a good one.